how on earth do you know what to look for when you're hiring a realtor? How do you know what realtor to hire? I mean, there's so many of them out there. How do you know if you got the right one? Different personalities, different styles, different market knowledge, different marketing plans, different everything. Like everybody's different. So how do you know if you got the right realtor or not? Or you're gonna hire the right realtor? So here, I'm just gonna run through a few things to think about here. Um, so I got a little PowerPoint here for you. So how do you, how do you feel when hiring a realtor. I mean, I hope you guys don't feel like any of these pictures here and, and what they depict. So here, like, do you guys feel like you're, you're under the heat or under, under pressure whenever you're hiring a realtor? Or how about, how does your realtor measure up? Do they meet your expectations? Maybe your expectations are too high or maybe they're too low or maybe they're just right. Um, but your expectations are your expectations and hopefully your realtor will come close to that and have a, have a good conversation about them and what you expect at the end of the day. And here, how about this? Do you feel like the prey or the predator? Who's in control? Do, and also too, the other thing to think about is, is your realtor aggressive enough to work on your behalf? They don't need to be not so much aggressive, but assertive. So, you know, you want them to look good for you. Um, how about this? <laughs> when you're selling a home, sometimes it can feel like you're in a storm and sometimes things just don't go right. Sometimes things get a little messy, but your realtor should help you feel calm in that storm. And no realtor out there, I don't care who they are, they're gonna say, some realtors will say, oh, I'll take all, way, all the stress and make this as easy as, easy as pie. Well, that's not necessarily true. There's always stress. No realtor, I don't care who they are, can take away 100% of the stress and make it a stress-free, I hear that all the time, stress-free. There's no such thing. So they'll, they'll help you eliminate some of that and make it as easy as possible. And that's what the realtors are for, is to help you feel calm in that storm. Um, how about this, do you feel like you're in a sea of sharks when it comes to realtors? Well, when you hire the right one, this is how you should feel down here. You should feel at peace, you should feel calm, you should feel confident in your realtor, you should feel, um, you know, because. You, you want to hire somebody that that you have that they have a personality that you can get along with because sometimes it can take months to to sell your home sometimes it can take very few very days but sometimes in a typical market it can take a lot longer than a few days it can take months and you want to have a good working relationship with your realtor and you know what this is this is about you not about me so this is about helping you achieve your goals, your real estate goals. So no matter what walk of life you are, that's what we're here for. That's what I'm here for, that's what all realtors should be here for. So there's a few websites here that I'm gonna take you to here and just kinda show you um, just some of the sites that will be able to help you and you know, it just get a bit of better understanding of who a realtor is or should be. One of the, a good site here is uh, CREA.ca, that's the Canadian Real Estate Association. So there's some good information in there, you know, the realtor difference and what they're committed to and so forth. Um, that's a good one. Then we have, this is the Lakelands Association. So this is the, the real estate board for the Southern Georgian Bay area. So that's like Collingwood, uh, Collingwood, the Muskokas, um, you're talking Town of Blue Mountains, Creemore, Stainer, with Sega Beach, all that area, that's all part of the Lakelands Real Estate Board. So Ontario's broken up into a whole bunch of different real estate boards and realtors have to pay to belong to each and every one. Now they, they, don't, they only have to belong to one to be a realtor, but they can also pay to belong to a whole bunch of other boards. And the advantage of that is, like myself, I'm a part, I'm a member of the Toronto Real Estate Board as well as the Lakelands Real Estate Board. So this way, um, I can connect with uh, with the Toronto buyers and the city buyers and um, all my listings and so forth go on there as well. So the advantages to the to the seller up here. So there's advantages to different boards belonging uh, for for each realtor to belong to different boards. Um, but that's a conversation that you would need to have with your realtor to see if it's an advantage to you. Um, so that is w uh, uh, about the individual real estate boards. But there is information on there too about uh, about hiring a realtor. Uh, another good one here, this is the Real Estate Council of Ontario. It's called, people refer to it as RICO, but it's the Real Estate Council of Ontario. So this really is, it's, um, 
it's a site where there's tons of information for for buyers and sellers but really what it, it boils down to is it it's an advocate for realtors but it's also the police force for realtors so it, it's there to police the you know regulate the realtors so that they they behave and they do what they're supposed to they have a code of ethics that they're supposed to follow so there is a short little video here i'm gonna just press click on here just watch a, a minute or so of it sell your home it can be tempting to try to do it yourself after all who knows your home one real cool thing you. watch this you want to speed this up to go to normal speed and i always watch stuff on fact is, selling a home can one and a half or two speed average. when you sell your home yourself you'll be responsible for everything setting the right price advertising showing the property reviewing offers negotiating terms and managing the paperwork once an agreement is reached well, I think that's enough of that, but you know what? You can go back in there and watch that video. It's a great video to watch. It's uh, at, that, uh, there it is, rico.on.ca. Great site. There's all kinds of stuff. There's there's uh, sections there for buyers and sellers, for real estates. And if you did have an issue with a realtor, you can actually go there and uh, you can submit a complaint form. Hopefully that never happens. I hope you have a great experience with your realtor. And uh, if you work with me, I hope you have a great experience. And by all means, if you didn't, I would hope you come to me and we'll settle it. We'll sort it out, figure out what, uh, what went wrong, and we'll figure it out. That's what we're here for. Another great site here, this is, this is realtor.ca. So this has a lot more power than most people think. Like people think they go here and they just search homes not the case there is a ton of information so when you go to that site this is the first so there's realtor.ca go there but don't look at this page that, that that just shows you all the houses scroll down to the bottom and then you'll click on what it says more posts and it will pop up and there is all kinds of more information in here um, one thing I like look at there's all kinds of blogs and posts and stuff like that um, the one I, I, I want to bring to your attention here is real estate 101 so you just click on that and it will bring you up to a page all about hiring a realtor so if you're feeling overwhelmed buying a house the section is empower you and take command of the process so this is just overwhelming the amount of information on here not like you could go there go there before you even start uh, talking to a realtor and uh, get all kinds of information now just remember wherever you go whether you go to korea or lakelands or whether you go to you know rico or realtor.ca make sure you speak to a realtor because one thing is this is general information and where you live there will be specific information to your location so just make sure you talk to a realtor at that so i want to jump back to my we powerpoint here so that's that now i want to talk to you guys about just some things to think about I know as a PowerPoint, this is a bit of overwhelming amount of text. Usually we just like to put pictures in a couple of words, but um, I just wanted to get, a, get you thinking. I want you to think a little bit more. So when you're thinking about hiring a realtor, are you comfortable with that person? That, that should be number one. I mean, that's why I got at the top. If you're not comfortable with them, you shouldn't be working with them. There are scads of, of realtors out there you could work with. So make sure you're comfortable with them. And, uh, and there's there's brokerages but then there's brokers and salespeople so the brokerage is the over the 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 body basically the you know the 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 franchise they own everything and then all the brokers and salespeople work underneath that brokerage but each salesperson and broker is actually their own business so you'll deal with them directly you won't actually be dealing with the brokerage so you got to be comfortable with the salesperson or broker that you're working with and if you want to know about the difference between salesperson and broker I'll explain that later um, in another video so the other thing is do you trust them why do you trust that person do you have a relationship with them does that realtor know the local market like we get people like myself I, I live in the southern Georgian Bay area I would never consider listing a property in Ottawa or or even Toronto I wouldn't consider that's a whole different market than it is in the southern Georgian Bay so you gotta know you gotta know that your realtor knows the local market and there's lots of micro markets within local markets even and when I mean micro markets I mean there could be a subdivision that has a market all to itself like that 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 subdivision may be in high demand we see that a lot for um, 
for uh, retirement communities and stuff like that. We there, there's sometimes waiting lists to get in there. So that that's 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 even a micro market inside a market. Um, and the other thing is, do they have a history of real estate sales? How long have they been in? And and sometimes you might hire a realtor that that is right out the gate, like they just got their license, and you may actually be their first sale. Don't count that against them, because one thing that's really good about that realtor who who has just been hired or just just started out is they may be able to focus all their energy on your sale. So that's a bonus. But the other thing is they need to have a backing in their brokerage of a history of real estate sales in that area. So if it's a brokerage that is you know out of area, you might want to consider how you're going to deal with that and then the history of real estate sales in that area. So think about that. Um, the other thing is, has the buyer or sorry, has your realtor worked in a buyer and seller's market? Because right now we're in we're in a buyer's market and that's changing. So this is 2022. The market is changing. Interest rates are climbing and uh, the, the volume of of homes is going to increase because there's not going to be as many buyers in the market. Now, there still is a lot right now. Don't get me wrong. Um, but that is going to change as the interest rate climbs because it's pulling away from the buying power of the buyer. So they'll be able to afford less of a house. So, you know, what they might have afforded five or 600000 a year ago, now all of a sudden they can only afford three or 400000 That's an example. I know that finding a $500,000 house is almost impossible these days. But know that they, they can work in both markets. Um, also, how about, can they negotiate on your behalf? If your realtor is caving on their fee for service, right at the gate, you know, you say to them, hey, well, you work for like 0.05% or something like that, like crazy, the guy might as well close up shop. But in the example, if he caves on that right away, how's he gonna negotiate for you on the sale of your property or when you purchase a property? Are they gonna be able to negotiate on your behalf? And also, too, when it comes to um, them, if you get an offer on your property, are they going to be able to defend the price that you guys set on that house? You know, they have to be able to defend that price, defend that uh, when, when they're selling it. So, you know, you don't want people thinking you pick some number out of a hat and there you go. So that's another thing. Think about how can they negotiate. Um, as far as stats go, um, there's so many stats out there, and if 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 you're asking the realtor about stats, or if the if the realtor comes in and throws all this paperwork on your desk and says, "Oh, I got stats coming out your ears right here," well, you know what? You can find all kinds of stats out there. Um, for an example, here I'll take you to a site here uh, where are we right here, Korea Stats. So that's the Canadian Real Estate Association. So that has all kinds of real estate stats. Just scroll down there. Look at national residential stats. So. You can find average sales, medium sales, the home price index. Like it's all there. And and that's just one site. You can find all kinds of sites. And every realtor will have their own stats. They'll have their own stats for so if you work for Roll a Page, they'll have their stats for, for their brokerage in that area. If you work for Remax, that, that they'll have their stats. If you work for Century Twenty One or Sotheby's or XP Realty or whatever, they all have their own stats. So stats to me aren't necessarily something, that shouldn't be the reason why you hear, hire a realtor. If they come in and throw all kinds of paper on your desk, well, the next guy can do the same thing. So you should be aware of it. You should be aware of how the market is functioning, but the, don't, don't let that be the be all to end all. Um, how about, does that, does that realtor have a good working relationship with other realtors? That's important because, hey, listen, we all gotta play nicely in the sandbox. So if you can't, I mean, the other kids are gonna kick you out. So you wanna work nicely. Um, so here's one, um, ask them about the hardest real estate deal they ever did. Hey, listen, you know, if you got a good realtor, if they've been dealt some really hard real estate agreements, like, you know, there could be all kinds of things that could head south on the day of closing. I've had deals where at like the deal's supposed to close at, at, at five o'clock on a certain day. I've had it where the lawyers or somebody calls me and says, we have a really big problem. It's four o'clock. We're in the 11th hour and almost 59th minute and something has gone haywire. So now that's when the realtor's got to scramble and try to put it back together. That's when you know, that's really when you know you got the right, right realtor. The thing is, is the realtor full-time? Do they, do they, are they working part-time or full-time? Because you want to have a, a sense of how, how much time they're going to dedicate to, uh, to making sure that the, the deal comes through for you. Um, so I'm just going to add a few more things here. Um, how about 
what is unique about your realtor? What 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 make what sets them apart from other realtors? Now you know there's there's thousands of realtors out there, so it's pretty hard to find one unique realtor that has something that nobody else can offer at all. So there there may be something unique about them, but there's other realtors that have that. But you know you want to kind of narrow it down a little bit. Um, the other thing that, that could be important is building a design experience. I mean that can really help with solving issues for say negotiating on behalf of a buyer or seller when it comes to home inspections. Um, the home inspector is a professional for finding the stuff and, and as a realtor too you may have a building experience like me I, I built for, for decades and, and also too I, I, um, my background is actually design, is, is residential uh, uh, design. So that's another good thing. The other thing is too is if they if they have good building and design um, experience and knowledge, then when they do a walk through your house, they can say, "Hey, listen, you know, if you did this little bit of stuff here, it'll cost you X amount of dollars, not a whole lot, but it will re the return on it when you sell it, and and the time it takes to sell it will be a whole lot faster, and you get you get more money for it because it makes it worth more money." So that's another thing. The other thing that's important is is the is the realtor explaining explaining the contracts like a, a lot of times I mean I've been to the countless lawyers and the lawyers just throw the papers on the thing at the desk and say here sign here sign here sign here and even before I got into real estate when I worked with realtors um, they would just say here sign here sign here sign here and I never really got an explanation of what what I was signing so get them to give you the brief even if it's just a layman's terms of of, of the agreement of purchase and sale or the listing agreement or whatever that's all you need um, the other thing is too is, is marketing. Every realtor has some kind of marketing, and and every realtor is going to say, "Oh, my marketing's better than the next guy." And 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 we get into the teams and stuff like that. They'll say, "Oh, I got way better marketing than than Joe Blow John Doe down the street there." You know, I, I can do way better. Well, that's not necessarily true because we can all hire professional uh, photographers. We can hire everything can be hired out. So you can have the greatest marketing out there. It. it it is good to know, get a general idea of what they'll do for you as far as marketing um, because you want to know how it's going to be presented to the public because you want it out there. You want as much exposure as possible. Um, one thing to be careful of too, if a realtor comes along, and this is my opinion for what it's worth, if a realtor comes along and says, you know what, um, let's keep this an exclusive listing, just meaning that it stays within the brokerage, um, that could be a detriment to you when you're selling because if it goes just to exclusive within that brokerage, you may be missing out on the broader, broader spectrum of buyers out there. There might be all kinds of buyers out there in general public that are willing to pay more for that house. And, and that's, that leads me into the next thing. Um, is your realtor uh, fair to all parties involved? That's one thing that I am very cautious of. So I do not go around saying, oh, you know what, I'll get you, I'll get you 50% more for your house than any other realtor on the planet. Well, that's not true. I'll get you as much as fair market value is because listen, if you're the buyer, do you want to be ripped off? No, I don't think so because you want to, you want to look at it from their perspective too. So at the end of the day, I always say if the buyer and the seller are happy with the deal, done. No, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. Everybody at Joe Blow out there can just go away because it's not, it's not their house. So that's what I say. Make sure both sides are treated fairly and everybody is happy at the end of the day. So the other, the last point I'm going to make, and I know this was an awful lot, and, and if you want, I can send these questions to you because you may not be in my trading area, so you might want to have these questions for, for interviewing your realtor wherever you live. So the last question I'm going to ask is about, or get you to think about is after sales service. So you know what? At the end of the day, when the contract closes, when the, we're like when the house sells and the completion date is done, and you the buyer moves into the house, whether you're the buyer or the seller, is the realtor still around, or have they fled the country, so to speak? Do you ever hear from them again? Or if you called that realtor up, would they help you? Because they're not getting paid anymore. There's no money on the table after the deal closes. But listen. You, the, the realtor should be working on a relationship, not a contract, because that relationship, you may want to use that realtor again. So, you know, that realtor should be willing to help. And, and that's what I do. So I've helped many, many, many clients long after, years after the deal is closed, helping them with different things like taxes and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, so by all means, make sure your realtor is there for you well after the sale. And um, 
So that, that just, that's just a couple of things that, that actually I have 20 points there. But, you know, I, I could think of many, 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 many more. And I'm sure you could think of lots more too. But we're already out of time. We're way past time. So anyways, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Joseph Talbot, real estate broker in the beautiful Southern Georgian Bay Area. And that means like Collingwood, Creemore, Wasega Beach, Town of Blue Mountains, you know, New Lowell and everywhere in between. So um, by all means, give me a shout. I'm happy to help and uh, maybe we can work together or you know uh, you know and if you're in a different location i might be able to help point you in the right locate uh, to the right realtor as well so anyways until next time i'm pulling for you i'm in your corner and uh until next time make sure you, you see that little button down there that red button make sure you subscribe to this and also feel free to uh watch this on on extra speed well actually you're at the end of the video so it doesn't matter so if you send it to somebody else tell them to watch it double speed Anyways, until next time, take care. Have a great day.